Doug here. This is my Underwood Model S typewriter. This was about 1941. This was about the pinnacle of typewriter technology. It has some amazing features for production use. Like this was every bell and whistle. Really amazing piece of hardware. We're going to walk you through in this video everything about it. So I'm not a typewriter expert, so I'm not going to know all the terms perfectly, but I'll walk you through what I learned, how the mechanics work while I took it apart, which is again, why I love taking things apart to refurbish them, because you learn so much about them. But let me walk you through the restoration process here. I took every nut, bolt, screw, and piece of metal off and polished, cleaned, and brightened them up. That was an incredible amount of work because these things are mechanical marvels. On the back here, you can see where it says um, Underwriter, Underwood Elliott Fisher Company. Uh, product of the United States, USA. You don't see that anymore. This is the tabulator bar, which we're going to get into. It's amazing. Um, and again, you can see all the hardware on the back here. Everything all polished up. And then the inside as well got a full treatment. So if you reach into the top here, this little cover releases. And you can pull that out. This is what dif differentiates it from the master typewriter came before because those were all exposed. But as you can see, I cleaned up all of the hammers or the anvils as they call them inside. Everything's been oiled and cleaned up. All internal parts have been polished and cleaned. That was a tremendous amount of work because this thing is a mechanical marvel inside. So I guess to show you the next features, I think I get a piece of paper inside. So to do that, we're gonna pull that down. Over here is your paper guide index. That can be slid left or right depending on the size of the paper that you're using. So basically you start out just by kind of sliding it in and then we'll release that back up and I'll lift just this, which allows this platen control to go up and down. So the platen I'm gonna refer to is this rubber roller inside here, which is the anvil that the hammer strike against. So you get that in. Now let's say I'm not happy with the alignment left to right. If I lift this up, it removes all the rollers and I can line it up with the ruler down inside there and then lock it in. And then I can set my start of my page. So speaking of start of page, we have these two levers on the front here. These are what set your margins. So this is the left margin, this is your right margin. I know it's a little confusing, but it's backwards the way the carriage moves. So basically, I wanna set it, but you notice it goes far too far back there. Well, I need to get the carriage back. What do I do? There's a, a lever or a button over here I can press to slide the carriage free. There's also one over here that allows me to do the same. So I can do it from either side. So basically, I wanna set it to where I want my paragraph to start, which is right there. I then slide this setting to that stop point. So now, anytime I take the carriage return, I slide it over, it stops at that point. If for some reason while I'm typing, I wanna go a little bit past that, over on the right side here, there is a margin release that allows me to go past that point. Uh, so I can do a further indent if I ever want to. Well, what about this other margin one over here? Well, this one sets where the end stop is. So once I go past that, you'll hear that beautiful ding sound. There's an actual uh, little nickel bell inside that does that ding, which is an amazing sound. Um, and as you're typing, You'll hear the bell, but it'll let you keep going for a little bit and then it will hard stop. So it gives you an advanced warning to say, hey, you might want to finish up that word that you're on before you get to the hard end stop, which is really awesome. So those are those guys. Uh, we covered these features and this one is your scale. It shows you your paper in reverse and again, your margin stops and where you're currently typing. This little lever inside here pops out and allows you to do smaller items like index cards or tags. And it holds it in place with these uh, platen rollers do not reach. There's also even smaller ones inside here. If you're doing a little small dog tag or something, you can put those on that to lock that in, which is a really cool feature. And let's say um, as you're typing, you want to like control the indent because there's a fixed indent, which is your line spacing. Well, there's a couple options. Over here, we have line spacing adjustments. So I want to do one space between words. So let's set, set this back down here and I do type in space and then I advance it and type space again. You can see we only went up one space. If I go to two now, and advance that over, it made a double space. And if I set this to three and go over, it will now do a triple space. So I can adjust my spacing. Well, let's say that spacing is not what I want. There's a clutch on the side here. I pull that out. This platen is now free to move. So if you're doing a form that has different boxes on it, I need to be able to slide this around. You can actually do this all one handed, which I think is amazing. So over here, you push your thumb on here, you hold this down and put your uh, middle finger on here, I can now go up and down and control my left and right movement freely. So a lot of typewriter artists will actually use this kind of gesture and then use their left hand to do all the, the typing, if you will, for the art. It's a really cool little system. So make sure I lock that back in. There's another lever over here. This one releases the entire carriage mechanism from all the other mechanisms. So it completely leaves it free. So you can just like over type and do things like that, which is really cool. Speaking of over type, let me turn that back off. On the front here, you'll see there's a couple levers. This one here sets your ribbon color. So if you look up top when I do this, you'll see this the ribbon raise up 
And if I change it to red, it doesn't quite raise up as far. It's for a dual color ribbon. I only have a single color in here, but it'll shift that ribbon depending on if you want to do red or black ink. Well, now you're going to ask yourself, why is there's this white one in the middle? Well, when I pressed it, the ribbon didn't go up and nothing happened. Well, what that's for, I believe, is back in the day, you'd have a white ribbon card you would stick in for your white out. And when you'd strike that, it'd restrike over your original character with the white to block it out. So I think that's a really cool feature. Over on the left side here, this is your type force index. It took a while to figure out. Again, I had to take it apart to learn that. So if I have it on the lowest setting and I hit a key, it returns slowly and it's very light to push. If I put it to the highest setting, it's very snappy and actually you can feel it hit your finger on the way back up. It responds with that. So as you build up your typing muscles, you can actually type with a harder force, which allows you to type even faster. So you can type really quickly with this unit, um, which is just a really cool feature. So I think I covered all the front features. Now to go onto the keyboard here. This one actually has backspace and it's a mechanical backspace. As I push this, it's actually going against the spring to push the key, key carriage back, which is really cool. These down here are your shift. So that lifts the entire carriage up. So if I want to type a capital T or a lowercase t, it lets me do that. Whoop, I'm over typing the same thing. So there we go. So I can do the shift. And again, that shifts the whole carriage. And there's this balanced torsion spring inside there uh, that holds the balance of the unit. So you're only pushing the difference of that spring, which works out beautifully. And that was fun to get that all balanced in. Uh, you have your shift lock over here. So if I hold that button down, it actually holds the shift in the air. So I can type all in caps angrily if I wanted to. And then I press the left one here to release that. These two up here were very unique. This is tab stop clear and tab stop set. And I was pressing these, they weren't doing it. I couldn't figure out what they were doing. And then there's this big bar on top. Here's where it gets really exciting. So let's say I'm over at my beginning margin. I press and hold this. You see it jumps over. That's your tab key. Like on your computer keyboard, it moves you over a set amount. Well, I could keep, you know, typing out some things and then I can hit the tab and shift over even further. How does that work? Well, believe it or not, that's mechanical memory. You're actually programming it. Well, how does that work? Well, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this paper out so you can see it better. This back here is your tab bar or your tabulation bar. And it's literally a bar full of little tiny tabs that can be set up or down. And that's done through keys on the front of the keyboard here. You can see it lifts up one of the tabs. And if I can reach around here, that pushes it back down. You're literally programming a mechanical memory bar on the back here of where you want your tabs to be. Well, why would you want two tabs? So for example, if I move past that tab point and then I press the tab key, you see it slides and then stops. Let's say you're working on a newspaper article and you have a picture in the middle and you want to type on each side of it. You can set that with this mechanically so it'll jump to each side of that automatically and keep your margins, which is a beautiful system. Um, I'm pretty sure on a modern keyboard, that's where the term tab comes from. This is your carriage tab stop, which basically becomes tab stop, which then became tab on your computer keyboard, which is a cool thing. This little guy down here I learned has a little brake shoe that actually grabs onto it when it reaches the end of the tab and there's a little shock that absorbs that to absorb the impact on the end so it doesn't hammer when it hits those tabs, which is a really cool feature. Um, let's see here, over on this side, you have your ribbon roller. So this allows you to advance your ribbon and if you went too far, you can advance it back by pulling it in or out, which is a really cool little clutch system. Again, this controls your platen from this side. Um, I think I covered all those features. I went over the keyboard and all over the front. So yeah, this is my fully restored Underwood Model S 1941, recently added to the collection. Thanks for watching.